Welcome to a quick overview video for GDS uh, Estimating's WinBid Pro version 15 software. Uh, the first thing you need to know is um, if you go to our website, which is gdsestimating.com that you see here, uh, it's real easy to just download the software and get it installed on your machine. Now this software is a locally uh, installed and run program, which means it installs on your C drive and it runs off your C drive. The licensing for the software, however, is uh, kind of communicated through our web server. So you do need uh, internet access, obviously, to download the software, but also the first time you log into it. So if you're new to us, uh, the first thing you would do is do this 30-day free trial. It'll download a file, and then once that file's downloaded, you run the file to install the software. And after you do that, it's good to know that you have to install some vendor catalogs. And if you go to products on our website, catalogs, then there's a big list of catalogs that are available for you to install. You can install one or all of them. It's up to you. And uh, there's actually a sample catalog just in the, the software the first time you install it. But chances are you buy from one of these manufacturers and you want to use uh, their products and their parts. So. Uh, go here and get whatever catalogs you need. And these catalogs are updated, um, you know, depends on the manufacturer, but sometimes once a year, sometimes every few years, sometimes not for five years. So it depends on how often they change their list pricing or add new products. And we send out a newsletter and when the newsletter will actually announce any updates to catalogs or brand new catalogs, things like that. So after you do that, um, you'll see after that's installed and the catalogs are installed, you'll see an icon like this on your desktop and you just want to double click that icon and then you'll see a sign in screen. So once you, uh, if you haven't registered on our server, the first thing you would need to do is create an account. And there's a separate video on creating an account, but basically you're telling it your email address and a password. It sends you an email. You verify that it's your email and then it says, okay, now you're registered. So, um, a few little steps there, but once you do that, you don't have to register again. You just sign in with your email address and your password. And um, you want to make sure you, you know, create a password that you're going to remember or make a note and hide it in a secure area or whatever so that you can uh, remember it once you uh, forget it sometimes. So, because what happens is the first time you log into the software, if you use it a lot, uh, like the next day, you won't be required to log in with your username password. You'll always be re required to select a username to get into the software. So this is kind of a different login than the actual license to use it. Um, and again, if it's a 30-day trial, you get 30 days free, but you're still logging in with a username and password. And then after you enter that, you pick the username for the actual program. And this is the part that's all desktop. It's it's all locally installed. You'll see all the vendor catalogs are on my C drive. And I've installed a lot of catalogs here, but I can just pick one. And once I pick that catalog, I have a list of jobs that comes up. This is a fairly new catalog, so there's only a sample job. And every catalog has a sample job just so that it opens with something like a drawing uh, that you can see. So the first thing to know about our software is there's this drawing window. The drawing window is kind of the key to the software because you're creating drawings with it. You're entering dimensions. You're uh, telling it what system to use. And all that dictates how the drawing is made. So the other thing that's critical here is all these items in this menu tree on the left. So it's kind of in a sequential order from top down. Um, you can actually get to our website by hitting training or help or support. And uh, one thing about our software, you've got all these different catalogs you can pick from. Each one has its own set of jobs. Each one has its own set of parts. But there's a glass table that uh, is part of our software. And the glass table actually applies to all catalogs. So we call that a global uh, table for glass. And it comes with a 206 pieces of glass uh, or types of glass and each one has a description each one um, has a type whether it's annealed tempered or 
Uh, you can even have different types like heat treated. Uh, whether it's insulated, the thickness of the glass, whatever square foot price it has, it comes with no pricing. So you would want to, you have to know that you need to go in there and enter your pricing. And this glass table that I clicked on in the menu tree, this is the master glass table. So whatever you put here applies from then on until you go in and change it. So that's how that works. Um, the other thing to know is uh, there's labor settings. So if you add new glass, which you can add, delete, change, any of this stuff, um, when you do that, make sure you select a labor code for whatever new glass you're adding because the, then the software will know how uh, how much time or man hours is required to handle that glass. So that helps uh, calculate correct labor amounts and uh, you know helps your quoting. So that's key to know that the glass table is global, that it has no pricing to begin with. You can go in and create or add prices. You can also add your own glass uh, types and, and names and all that, and you can modify what's here. Um, so the other thing that's key is there's what's called framing systems. And the framing systems are configurations for each manufacturer. So each catalog has a list of framing systems, and each one uh, has a name, and it has a type and a profile. So all these different settings. So if I click Edit on one of these, it gives me even more details, so all the different profiles, the add to daylight. So if, you know, this is all manufacturer kind of specified settings. If you do anything different than the manufacturer normally does, you're going to want to go in and check over and change and edit any of that information. And we allow you to do that. You can change any of this. You can delete a system and add your own. So this is really the heart of the software because the drawing isn't created unless you select a framing system. Uh, so you can know all the dimensions and heights and widths and profiles and all that, but without that information configured in a framing system, uh, the software doesn't know what to do with a drawing. So this is the, the key here is this first screen is the uh, profiles, the basic um, type of system we're working with, and like I say, add to daylight for glass. So the next key part of a framing system is all the different parts that are uh, associated to each component. And then each component um, could have several parts. It could have one, it could have two, you know, five, whatever. So this screen here has all the different component part numbers. Uh, it even has a section down here in the bottom left that has all the continuous part numbers. So all these are going to be interrupted. Um, the head and sill are interrupted by verticals, the horizontals, of course, uh, the wall jams. And the other screen back here, the first one, has a uh, a setting to actually change the um, the way the wall jams interrupt the head and sill. So there's little settings like that down here. So you want to get familiar with those in case you do it differently than the, the manufacturer. But uh, the other thing that's key to notice here is the detailed drawings for a different component or uh, an assembly, let's say, of like this is a sill assembly for this part with uh, with tube light and these detailed drawings, 99% uh, of the time, are configured for you. So if you ever go in and change some of these parts, uh, like for a, a wall jam or a head sill, you're going to have to change the detailed drawing if you want to do your own shop drawings. So all it is is a, is a pointer, actually, to a file that's installed on your uh, hard drive, and it's installed under the catalog that you're using, and then there's a detailed drawings folder. And you can download new drawings, put them in that folder on your computer, and then point to that file in one of these uh, fields, and then it would open that drawing instead of the one that's there right now. So that's a key thing to remember. Um, another tab is the, the gasket material. Another tab is all the different hardware, clips, setting blocks, screws, things like that. So that's key. Um, the entrances kind of work the same way. Door frames have their own configuration with parts and uh, profiles and things. Door leaves as well. So parts profiles so that the program knows how to draw it and what parts to use when that particular configuration is selected. So that's all key to how an elevation is drawn. If an elevation is drawn correctly, it's going to calculate your cuts, your quantities of parts, uh, and then the costs of the parts are another story. So that's in your parts list. 
the parts list has each individual part for this manufacturer, like Tube Light has, uh, you know, over 5,800 parts. And that's everything, stock link parts, doors, door frames, uh, screws, setting blocks, uh, vinyl or gasket material, um, and dams, you know, all of it. So all that stuff is in the, the parts list, which we also call the parts table. Um, now, most manufacturers, almost all of them, include uh, list pricing for all their different parts. So there's what we use is a multiplier to give you a discount. So a 0.75 multiplier is a 25% discount off of list. And those multipliers are all set to one when you install a catalog. So the one uh, is obviously going to give you list pricing. So you would have to go through and change um, the different factors, the multipliers, for all the different types of parts. And this is where the catalog code, the catalog page, even using uh, a prefix of a part number, like all the P parts for um, a company like TubeLite might have the same multiplier. So I just I just filtered right now by typing in this row at the very top of the list. I filtered our list to only parts that have P's. Um, and there's actually a lot, 2,569. Now I can change that group of parts by clicking up here. And this is a warning that says if you do this, everything in that list is going to be changed. But remember, I filtered this list to only the P parts. Um, so now I can say, you know, give me a new multiplier for this. Give me a 0.6. And I'm going to update it. So now all those different parts have a 0.6 multiplier. So you want to be real careful when you do that, but it's a very powerful tool, and that's how you can update your catalog to give you accurate pricing. So there's separate videos just on that alone, but uh, that's basically a quick overview of how that works. Um, same thing with stock links. If you needed to change stock links, uh, I can filter the list. First, I'm going to clear it, so I start with a fresh complete list. If I want to change all the stock links from 290 to something else, I'm filtering my list to the parts that have a 290 stock length. Now, uh, there's 1,127 of those, so you're changing a lot of parts when you do that. But that's exactly how you would change it to, say, 288 if you wanted to change it. Um, so that's a quick rundown of how the parts work. Um, so the last, well, second to last big thing is the optimizer. The optimizer is after you've drawn an elevation like we see behind us, um, the program already knows how many pieces and what length they are, but the optimizer doesn't know until we say get elevation parts. So we get elevation parts and now it's time to optimize. And excuse me. So to optimize, the, the we click this button here, and that's when it's figuring out what uh, number of stock lengths all those different cut pieces fit into. So that's going to give you your pricing for your, your final order of stock lengths. Um, and you can manipulate this. You can add uh, cut pieces. You can edit cut pieces. You can uh, delete them. But anytime you hit this get elevation parts, it's going to pull in whatever cut pieces those elevations you've drawn uh, are revealing. So remember that if you change an elevation, if you edit a job, go and field measure and change your dimensions, any of that stuff, you have to hit get elevation parts again because it needs to go refetch all that current information. If you don't do that, it's using all the cut sizes from what, you know, the last time you hit get elevation parts. So that's a very critical thing about the, the optimizer. And then we can print our cut list. Um, again, there's videos on all the different details like the cut list and how uh, the optimizer works, but that's a rundown of that. Then you've got all your different reports. So you've got a print report window where you can actually select different reports and print them all at once, or you've got individual reports like final parts that gives me a total list of parts, doors, frames, uh, stock links, miscellaneous, gasket, all that. I can print that out. If I want to edit multipliers for this particular job, I can do that as well. Otherwise, um, it's going to pick up whatever multipliers I set in my parts list. And the glass, same kind of thing. Um, if you put in the pricing for your glass, it'll pick that up. If not, you can do it on a per job basis, and I can update prices here. Same kind of filtering works. If I want all my tempered glass to have a certain price, I can filter my list to tempered. I can say change price. If it's $5, 
I can update, and now all these different tempered pieces of glass have that $5 price. I hit clear filter, I get my full list back, and, uh, and then I can print my report. So that filter bar is wherever you see a grid like this, you should see a filter bar like that, and it helps limit what you're seeing in that list. So, uh, And once you limit it, you can manipulate the information in it easier. Um, there's labor, markup report, final summary shows you kind of a summary of all the different uh, areas, the perimeter, you know, number of joints, but also the glass, the doors, metal, uh, any labor if we calculated it. So there's a labor menu, there's a markup report that gives you a chance to put in all the sales tax, any surcharges, uh, and obviously your markup rate for all the different types of uh, material and labor and stuff. Um, so that's going to give you your bottom line price with your profit in included. So uh, you can do shop drawings. So the shop drawings are um, here. When you click that, basically it uh, gives you another tab at the bottom here. And if I hit next, set, so it'll give us elevations and it'll give us details. And it pulls all the different details in from... Uh, what was configured in that framing system that we're using for this job, which down here is frame number 21. It's a VersaTherm storefront system. So these are the details for that system. I can print them out, or it saves those files for you on your hard drive, and then you can open them in a CAD program. And I can even click our little CAD tool and open uh, the current drawing that's on the screen directly in that CAD program and start manipulating that drawing. So I can uh, do things like delete uh, dimensions, add different dimensions. So it's it's a full CAD program, but it's working with a drawing file that our program already exported, and uh, it mean it's not backward compatible. So that if I change a drawing in a CAD program, it's not going to change it in our estimating program. It's the other way around. We have to change it in our estimating program, and then it creates a new drawing. So if there's something our program isn't doing for you, you can do it in CAD and print it, but just remember that it's not affecting our software if you're if you're making modifications in CAD. Um, so that's pretty much it. Once you've signed in, you can go to your GDS license window and then see what your license status is. It tells me when my license expires. Um, I can log out if I want to, if I don't want it someone to be able to come along and double click on the icon and get right into the program. Uh, if I So if I do hit log out, it would force me to enter my password again. If I don't, then I can get into the program tomorrow and uh, I don't need to enter a password. So that's a pretty uh, brief but also thorough rundown of what this program does. Thank you very much.